Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Glad to see you around these parts again. I have a new episode for you today. I figured I'd do something a little bit different because this is the end of 2018. We're just about at the end of December. That means that 2018 is coming to a close. And I figured I'd do something fun and kind of reflect on all the things that have happened in the past year. In particular, I want to talk about all the major releases and newsworthy things that happened in the land of JavaScript. I'm talking about libraries, frameworks, just things that are notable of that were pretty big milestones throughout the entire year. So I just want to go through really month by month and just kind of reminisce with me about all the things that happened this past year because when I actually made this list together, I was actually pretty surprised about some of the things that happened this past year. I was very shocked at some of the releases that came out this year that I just kind of assumed had been around forever but they actually just came out this year. So that means that there's gonna be no coding this week, so I apologize if you were looking forward to my terminal screen showing little characters going back and forth with brackets, braces, and bears, oh my. This week is just gonna be me talking to you and just kind of just, you know, talking about what happened this past year. And also, just let's celebrate 2018. It was a uh, very, it was a year, wasn't it, 2018? It was, uh, it was good, it was bad. Uh, it was a lot of things. That is for damn sure. So let's just start talking about what happened this past year. And we're going to start off with January. And this is January 2018. This is pretty much a year ago today. And what you may not be aware of is that this past year, Prettier, the uh, code formatter that I actually had a video about last week or two weeks ago, started off this year as version 1.10 and it's ended this year in December with its other release for 1.15. So there's been uh, five releases of Prettier this past year in 2018. Prettier has come a long way in one year, but hasn't changed that much in this year, which is a testament to its stability that Prettier is still very much a uh, rock solid thing that you can use in your applications. Also a big thing that came out in January this past year was uh, Bootstrap 4. The uh, very popular web framework Bootstrap 4 was a year ago, pretty much, that it came out. A really funny thing that I got really excited about is that the TC39 got an official logo, so it was no longer me just typing out TC39, I could actually show a logo of theirs. Immer, which has become very popular this past year, Immer, I-M-M-E-R, it's from the same author as MobX, it's a way to create immutable updates to objects via a mutable API. It went 1.0 in January last year which the growth in popularity and kind of it's being used as a primitive elsewhere has just been awesome. And the biggest thing that came out in January 2018 was that Mobile Safari in iOS 11.3 added support finally for service workers. Before that was the major blocker for adopting service workers, which allows you to have offline apps in a very uh, highly powered way. Now it's on mobile. Let's go to February. February. Two big things happened in February. Uh, Ember went 3.0, uh, another framework that I don't really talk about that much, I don't use it, but it went 3.0, which every major milestone is a big one to talk about. And two, one that I do use a lot is Webpack went 4.0 final, and that was a big release. Uh, Webpack has been 4.0 final for this entire year, which is good because that's a highly dependent library and having that stability throughout the entire year means that it is working for people out there. I think it's on version like 4.23 or something like that. They're working on five, I've heard whispers that Webpack 5 is going to have built-in persistent caching, which means that when Webpack dies and then you bring it back up again, it actually can use the cache on the file system to actually get you in a state again that you can just start developing without actually having to process all these files right away. Let's go to March. March! A lot of things happened in March. MobX4 was released, the very popular alternative to Redux. TypeScript 2.8 came out. They didn't really follow Semver, so like, TypeScript 3 came out later last year as well. But there were two other big things that came out in March that were very exciting for me. Uh, the first one, which uh, used to be more pertinent to me in years past when I used it more, is that D3 went 5.0 final. And that was actually a pretty small change for D3 compared to D3 4.0. The big thing with D3 5 is that it actually changed its default API from a callback API to a promise API, which is great to see D3 modernizing, but D3 4 was really a big release where it kind of modularized D3 and in, in its totalitarian, uh, which 
was a big change if you have used in D3.3 before, but D3.5 just promises, which is awesome. And the biggest change in March for me, I think for most people out there, was that NPM introduced their new website, which was, in retrospect, way overdue. The old website was way not as usable as the new website. Uh, just the amount of information that you can quickly access the new website has just been awesome. It's so exciting to see NPM there grow and get better. Let's go to April. April! Big things happen in April. Big things. Uh, let's start off with one that was completely unexpected for me. Underscore 1.9 was released. Uh, the previous version of Underscore was 1.83 and that came out three years ago. That's wild in this world of JavaScript, which uh, moves too fast. <laughs> Who knows about speed when you get JavaScript. Also, uh, Redux 4 came out, which wasn't the biggest. Redux has been very stable. It wasn't a huge breaking change, but it was good to see that come out. But the two biggest changes that came out in April, uh, I don't even know which one is more exciting to me. Uh, I'll do, yeah, okay, so uh, the first one, NPM 6 came out, which was uh, the new version of NPM. Um, my hopes is that I'm trying to get NPM 6 and lock down all those package lock changes, making sure that everyone on my team is using NPM 6 so that they don't have those errant package lock changes that's still a work in progress, even all the way back from April. Things do move slow. But the biggest thing that came out in April was Node 10. Node 10 in April. Still using it, still awesome, still rock solid. And let's go to May. May! Only one thing kind of happened in May that I have in my list, uh, which is kind of funny. Uh, do you remember uh, Smooshgate? when they were trying to add a new base function into an uh, array of flatten or flat. Essentially, they didn't know what to call it. There's a thing with smooch, whatever. But that was in May, and they had the resolution in May about changing it to be, changing flatten to be flat due to backwards compatibility issues. But that was May, very small. Let's go to June. June! Things happen in June. First and foremost, EC 2018 was approved. The language that we all know and love, ECMAScript 2018, was approved in June for that edition. Also, MobX 5 was released. Uh, wasn't it just a couple of months ago that uh, MobX 4 was released? Uh, yeah, that was in March. So, uh, MobX 5 moving fast, but it's been stable in 5 for then. The big change of MobX 5, I believe, was moving to using uh, proxy objects instead of just overriding descriptor objects to making it a little bit more efficient for more modern browsers. ESLint 5 came out, the ESLinter that everyone knows, loves, and appreciates. That was back in June. I'm enjoying ESLint. It's getting better at figuring out how it can actually catch more issues in my code. Every release is better. The biggest thing that came out in June, uh, didn't really come out, but was more announced and took a lot of people up by surprise, was Microsoft buying GitHub. That was June. Can you believe that was almost six months ago in June? Microsoft bought GitHub. Wild. July? July! July TypeScript 3 came out. Good. Let's go to August. August. Some cool things happened. Dart 2 Stable was released, which I guess is notable. We'll see what the future proves for that. Ghost 2.0 came out, a very popular node uh, and JavaScript blogging application. And these other two ones are a little bit more bigger in my opinion, a little bit more bigger. Uh, GraphQLJS 14 came out and that was including a huge host, a huge host of uh, new features in GraphQL. So GraphQLJS being the uh, example implementation of GraphQL that many people build on top of. Big release there. And the biggest release in August for sure without a doubt was Babel 7. Babel 7 came out Another great iteration in the Babel ecosystem. It's always measured, even, and tried and true. Biggest change of Babel 7 was just putting in better practices for helping the language of JavaScript grow in general. Uh, deprecating presets because those weren't maintainable, moving proposals into uh, separate plugins that explicitly say proposal, and not really focusing on TC39 stages anymore, just mostly about uh, this being a proposal itself, trying to enable proposals to be using Babel to actually dog food their implementations to see if people actually like what they're like. They're trying to do that with the pipeline uh, proposal right now, getting uh, pipeline syntaxes into JavaScript itself. There's three competing ones right now. They're using Babel to kind of just see which one has the best ergonomics for developers at large. But Babel 7 came out in August. That was, that was, everyone was very excited about that. I know I was, I was using the beta for a while, which was naughty for me, but I couldn't wait. But Babel 7, 
August was great. Let's go to October. October! My favorite month, it's my birthday month, so no surprise there. A lot of things happened in October, holy smokes. Uh, so Node 11 came out. Uh, Node is kind of like a TikTok release where Node 10 is long-term service. Uh, Node 11 is more the experimental branch, so that came out in October. I think that was per their schedule. Uh, Angular 7 came out. I don't really follow the world of Angular that much anymore, but it's always good to see uh, Angular get more iterations there. Storybook 4 came out. Big deal with Storybook 4 is it now supports Babel 7, which is great. And Styled Components version 4 came out, which is a great CSS and JS library. And I think the biggest release in October in some ways was actually the release of Create React App 2.0. Uh, I'm, I'm very much in the React world, so having that go 2.0, that basic app scaffolding thing that has more things built in. For example, uh, Create React App 2.0. 1.2.2 added support for TypeScript. So you could actually uh, install TypeScript uh, loader to actually get TypeScript support into Create React App without having to eject. They're, they're letting you do more without having to eject and do things yourself. So it's a great middle ground that they're doing there. And November, November. Not too much happened that week. Uh, prettier week, month. <laughs> Time flies when you're talking to a camera. Prettier 1.15 came out. I talked about that back in January, but that's how long it took to get to 1.15. There's things that happened in between, but I don't know. Uh, the biggest thing that happened in November was the introduction of the GraphQL Foundation, and that's pretty exciting. That was kind of having an independent body to actually be the steward for the GraphQL spec proposal thing, uh, kind of just taking that onus off of Facebook and more onto the community at large. And that was great to see that happen in November. And last but not least, December. December, so called. What happened in December this month that we are still living in? Uh, TypeScript 3.2 came out. I already talked about that. Great to see that continue to evolve. Uh, Flutter 1.0 came out, which was uh, Google's answer to React Native. We'll see how that pans out in terms of success. Emotion 10 came out, another very loved CSS and JS framework. And then uh, big news also, I think just, you know, adjacent to the JavaScript world is uh, WordPress 5 came out. And the big thing with WordPress 5 was the introduction of an entirely new editor experience when you're actually making your WordPress posts. That came out in December. So that was 2018. A lot happened in 2018, but not as much as you might expect, but still a lot that you might didn't expect. Beth, what the heck am I saying? What was the things that surprised you the most? Uh, there was some, or anything that I missed even. Did I miss any things that happened this past year that I didn't mention that you think I should actually include? What surprised you? What took you off guard? Uh, I was surprised at kind of the even pace of progress. I think some of the double major bumps this past year of MobX from four to five were kind of perfunctory. They weren't the result of a rapid pace of innovation, not to say that they're not innovating, but it was more just following strict Semver to actually uh, portray the breaking changes that are contained in that library. MobX4 being like the long-term support for legacy users and MobX5 being kind of the future. So I kind of saw that pattern repeated often throughout the year, just people being a little bit more respectful of what their dependency of other person's libraries introduces there. That's the same is true with create, create ah, so hard for me to say. Create React app, doing more without having to eject. 2018, uh, you've been real-ish, kinda. I got really mixed feelings about you, 2018. Really mixed feelings. But I'm looking forward to 2019. What's gonna happen in 2019? Uh, it's going to be uh, an interesting world. I'm, I'm, in, I'm mostly excited about, what, what am I excited about? I'm excited about Webpack 5. I want that persistent file ca offline caching. Uh, Reason ML, I want to talk about more on this channel because I think that is definitely the potential to grow a lot next year. TypeScript, if not already over the hump of popularity, is going to just, I think, balloon past. I think Flow has kind of been shrunken down to what it formerly was. Uh, what else is there that is exciting? Um, WebAssembly, sure. I don't really know much about it, but I think it's still kind of in the uh, early prototype stages. Let me know your thoughts. I'm interested to hear. Tweet at me, add me a comment. Uh, I'm not going to hear from you the following week, so I'm going to take some time off just to enjoy the holidays, just kind of uh, retool and get myself back together again and kind of think about new, new, new videos to share with you later. So I'll see you again uh, in the next year, 2019. Uh, it's been a great year talking with you out there. I'm glad to see you around. And I will uh, talk to you again next year. Uh, happy, happy New Year. Happy New Year.
Bye.